What's going on, you lovely people? Welcome back to another episode of our Celta Vigo career mode today. I'm excited to bring you this one. Last episode, you saw us beat FC Barcelona, which means we hold top spot down on our own. Played a thriller against them, beating them 3-2 in the game. It was a very changed around side, which was surprising enough, but we're back today. We're ready to go again for more games. And as you know, the Champions League group, it's so close. So that game against Man United is going to be important today. We'll see how we play in that one to come. We also have pretty much December and then we'll be into the January transfer window. So not a long way to go until we get another moment to be able to buy players. And I'm really excited for that as well. So with it being Friday, welcome to your weekend. Hopefully you're having a good day so far and hopefully you have a great weekend as well. So let's start it off in the right way with a victory. We take on Granada first, which I'm going to be simming that because it is at home. And as you know, I'm going to be simming a couple more games in this series to get through it slightly faster. So without further ado... Let's sim it. It's a 10 p.m. kickoff game, which is strange. Also, I'm aware the lighting in here is not great, and I need a haircut, okay? I, I know I need a haircut, which is why I was considering putting on, like, I'm not even kidding. I have a Santa hat somewhere. Here it is. I was genuinely considering, as I just knocked over a cup, my bad, considering wearing that instead today because my hair was that bad. But still, forget about it. Tune up already in this game. Mina and Mayo before Belotti scores to make it three. Belotti is on eighth. Flyer right now in this in this series. I honestly don't know. I think he scored 10 goals or 11 goals now in 11 games, which is sensational from the Italian. But as I said, I'm not really using in the greatest way you know possible. And uh, I've actually got a few transfer listed players now as well, so I'll take you through a couple of those in a moment. But I've also sent out a scout to pick up a new scout future star, so we should have that coming through in this episode as well. First game done, first victory on the board. Very happy with that one, but of course. The more important one comes now. If we lose this game against Man United, it throws it all into the air. The worst case scenario is that we end up in Europa League football. And I'll still be happy with that, you know? We'll still be fighting in Europe for a trophy. It'll be grand and all that good stuff. So that's the worst case scenario from here on out. It can't get any worse than that. So there is that to look forward to at least. But I've got some training to do. So I'll do this, change around the team, and then we'll go into the game against Man United. So we have already played over at Old Trafford. And they will have to come towards Spain take us on today. I've named that side. It's We've got a red card to net Marvellous, so he can't start in the CDM role today. I've decided to play Johnny ahead of Dermisi for no other reason than I just, you know, kind of want to play Johnny for this game. There isn't a lot of separating those two guys. They both perform similarly, and they're doing pretty well themselves. In terms of everywhere else, though, it's pretty much our strongest lineup, and it's going to be quite tough, you know, to keep Manchester United quiet. But I think if we win this, I'm pretty sure that will secure us Champions League football knockout rounds. I think, because Man United right now are on six points, we're on eight. So if we do win it, they can't catch us. And of course, it'll be between them and I think uh, Fenerbahce to fight it out for the other spot. So yeah, victory here will get us secured. A draw will not do it, but theoretically will. Um, you know, it'll put us in there, one foot in, and then we just have to do the next job um, against Porto. And then, of course, defeat throws it entirely up in the air. So all we have to do is avoid defeat, and I'll feel pretty comfortable. Let's get into this. We are loving life right now in La Liga. Topping a table in that. Things are going well in the Champions League. This series is working out, of course. We yet to win a trophy We sell to Vigo, which is considering the fact that normally within my series is within the first season, I've either got like a really good squad and a challenging um, or, or I've already won stuff. It's been a bit of a change, I guess, this time around because normally I'm used to winning a lot of stuff. Whereas, you know, the first season was about me building and we finished second in La Liga. And this is our first time playing Champions League football. Lukaku! Ugh, and that wasn't great defending because Romelu Lukaku has the first effort and it goes wide of that post. But yeah, it's been a nice change having to work our way up and not exactly winning everything and being the best side in the division. I know this season we are top of the table, but we'll see for how long that lasts. After last season we were up there as well, but Barca had pinched it in the final few games. But Lotti already looking for an instant reply from us. Mina strike! He sends one wide. One chance apiece and they've both gone wide. <clears throat> Johnny Labotka. Finds Andrea Bellotti. Bellotti to Sisto. Sisto. Oh, no. It's actually worked out kind of. Vass. Oh, he's got in. Vass. Oh, what a save, David De Gea. Massive luck coming through for us there, though, as we actually got in. And I didn't mean it to go that way, but it just worked out perfectly for us. Lukaku and Alexis need to be careful here. If I'm not, they might get a chance. As uh, Hugo Mayo does very well against Alexis Sanchez and just about deals with it as well and gets the ball. Well done. But that worked out. Vass luckily got through, had the shot, and David De Gea had to make the save. Blanco. Johnny towards the Botka. He will find Sisto. Sisto sees the run of Mina. Mina has got Bellotti on the other side. We are now three on three with this Manchester United backline. Andrea Bellotti, can we use the ball effectively? That's the question. Bellotti 
towards the edge of the area. Lebok is there. Chris Smalling with a big block. And that's going to be Lukaku winning that. Wait, what? He didn't win it. It's the first time the entire game I've won a header against uh, Romelu Lukaku. And that's great because it puts us with another chance here. Mayo needs a better cross than the other time. That's a handball. Never mind. It's going to come to Blotti. Oh, what a finish. Andrea Bellotti, Celta Vigo lead. That is a sensational finish from Andrea Bellotti. Right into that bottom corner. And we have the lead in with 10 minutes left. Perfect. As I said, look at that for a finish from Andrea Bellotti. Doesn't get much more clinical. Off the inside of the post and nestled in that bottom corner. Lovely finish. Now we'll go to defensive because we've got the goal that we required. It's been a pretty straightforward afternoon here for us, honestly. We've defended well when we've needed to and we've got the chance and we've taken that chance. So provided that I don't lose my concentration here with one minute or so to go, which as you know happens quite a bit... We will hold on to this win and should be now securing our place in that knockout rounds of this Champions League. And then I'll be just fighting with Fenerbahce to decide who goes out as winners. But I don't think that matters too much. I might sim that. No way. I'm getting caught on the counter all of a sudden. We didn't need to do this. Alexis has got Lukaku over. Can he use him? Instead, he goes inside. Alexis Sanchez. Like Blanco, what a save. Sanchez is header. No way has that gone in. I can't believe it. 90th minute again, I made the mistake of getting too caught up the other end. I can't even blame anything for that other than me. I went forward, but I just didn't need to go forward. But Blanco bailed me out, and then the ball just bounced straight back to Alexis, who, to his credit, headed home. And that's frustrating, because now it means that we're not secured into that next round. We put a foot into it, but we will not be 100% through to the knockout rounds of the Champions League. So... I hope we go again, I guess. But again, it comes from my mistake. 90th minute equaliser. We concede so many goals late on. And it's not even me, like, lapsing in concentration. It's literally, I get caught one time. And that's the thing that cost me. Again, though, I shouldn't have committed the men I did forward. I should have just... I, in fact, I think I was on defensive. So I don't understand why there were so many people running forward. But hey, listen. A 1-1 draw. I'll take it. As I said, we were the miles better side. United didn't really do too much. And they didn't really deserve that draw. But... So the way it goes. Porto beating Fenerbahce, I think. With that result there, I think that's us through. Because Fenerbahce play Manchester United in the final group stage game. I will check that. But I think that sends us through. Alright, so as always, you won't be able to see this because my ugly mug will block it. But that puts us on to nine points. Fenerbahce are on seven. And Manchester United are on seven. So even if we lose the game against FC Porto in the final group stage game that we had to play... Fenerbahce and Manchester United, the worst they can do is a draw. And that will put them both on eight points, which is not enough to knock us off. But of course, if one of them win, we'll be knocked off top spot. Um, so that's the only thing, really. But we are now secure mathematically in that next round. Because there isn't a way that both teams can pick up enough points in order to knock us out of second place as well. So I could sim the game against Porto. Because I'm honestly not that bothered about going through as group winners. Because that isn't what is important to me. Um... Just checking, it is actually against FC Porto. So yeah, as I said, I could sim that. And it honestly wouldn't even matter. Because when you get to the knockout rounds of the Champions League, I've seen so many times I play, you know, teams that I just shouldn't be playing by winning the group. So honestly, I don't care if we win it or go out of second place. I called it the group of death. So to even get through it will be great enough. And that now means that we are through into that next round. Okay, so we got a scout report back of our scout future star. So we'll be able to see who it's actually going to be. Um, who has he brought back? I think we already had Dior. I'm pretty sure we had him. I'm going to assume it's from a nation that I don't actually have in here. We had Reese already. We had these guys. Is it that young man? I'm pretty sure it's this left back here. Six foot four, Luca Rossi. Now, I think that's just his potential. I'm going to leave him in here for now. I'm not going to do anything with him, but I'm pretty sure that's the scout future star back. Left back, six foot four. 59 overall. Worst case scenario, he's tall enough to play centre-back, so that's all we'll play him in. You know, that's that's the worst case scenario. So, it's a decent pull. We've got a game against Deportivo. Smashed them last season 6-0, didn't I, in the, uh, in the game we played against them. So, this one will probably be a similar case. I'm going to sim it because I honestly think we'll win. Um, famous last words, though, guys, because I honestly bet now I've said that, we're probably going to end up losing the game like a mug. But, yeah, nonetheless, I'm happy to see that guy come through. I also got a transfer request, as you know, from Lobotka. So he is transfer listed. So most likely in January, we'll lose him. And we'll have to think about bringing in a replacement. I'm mean, excited that, though, I did bring in Marvellous. So he could be that man to be a replacement. And is that another player of the month for Santimino? Or is this Bellotti? Santimino picked up the last player of the month. This one is going to go 
I'm guessing this is Belotti. I can't tell from the actual picture. It is not. It's gone to Mina again. Madness. Santi Mina's picked up two player of the months in a row now. He's got to be considered for the Spain squad, surely, now. Because that's, that's the second player of the month in a row. All right, let's get into game then. So, as I said previously, back with a full strength side. Diaz comes back in. He was slightly injured in the game against Man United, which is why we had to play Gomez instead. Picked up a slight knock, so I had to, you know, take him out and uh, put, put Gomez in. But he's back today. We're in game against Deportivo. We're 40 minutes in and it remains nil-nil. We are undefeated at the top of the table thus, start, thus far after 12 games. We've had 10 wins, one dra uh, two draws and zero defeats. Vass has given us the lead inside 61 minutes. One up. Things are looking rosy at the top for Celta Vigo. And as it stands, 90 minutes on the clock, we do get the 1-0 win. Very happy with that indeed. I understand simming games aren't the most enjoyable to watch, but neither is playing teams like Deportivo when I know I can beat them through a sim. Sensational stuff. Keeps us top of the table, and everything is pretty decent up there. I'm sure I've accepted offers for this guy previously. So why he's still here, I don't know. Because he's rejected the other ones. I, I sincerely hope that by the next FIFA they fix this. The amount of times I accept offers for players in this game and they don't agree terms, it's actually silly. I'm not sure if I mentioned this in the previous episode, and I apologize if I did, but I did see a comment as well regarding can I change some of the players so that they have the untucked shirts. You have to be level 15 to unlock the edit player section, and on this particular account, I am only level 13, so I can't actually do that yet. Got a game against Numancia. I'm thinking that I already played these guys once, and I think we won it. So I'm going to switch around the side, and then we'll sim this one as well, because as I said, there's no point me playing this. I know I can win, and I'll be back in a second. So, round of 32 of the Copa de España, ready to go into this. As I said, I'm pretty sure I've already played against these. And uh, I'm pretty sure we won it. It might have been there, 4-0. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure we've already won this one. So, unless of a collapse, we'll be heading through to the next round of the Copa de España. You can see the side. I've changed it around. Lopez is in goal. 11 changes to the side that played last time out and beat the um, Deportivo 1-0. Got Ruiz in there. Busquets in there as well. Xavier, one of our scout future stars. And Ayala as well. So two game-generated players make the lineup today. Lobotka opens up the scoring. We concede, though, after Guillermo gives them a goal back. And as I said, though, it doesn't really matter at this point because on the second leg, we have drawn 1-1. And it means that we are through to the next round of the Copa de España. Next up, Sporting Guion. As you can see, we're going to be simming this one as well at home. Should be another three points on the board. Back to our full-strength side. I've decided as well, I am going to play that game against FC Porto because it would be ideal to get out as group winners. Um... All things considered, I said that I know I honestly didn't care. But the truth is, it does give you that slight advantage depending on who wins the other ones. So we may as well play it. Try ourselves to get through. Vass has scored twice here as Garcia's picked up a red card. So we're playing with 10 men, but we are 2-0 up through Vass doubling his advantage. As it stands, heading towards another three points in the division. With 10 minutes left, no goal yet for Andrea Bellotti. He has come off the field of play. Gomez, Maxi Gomez, that is, comes on. Hugo Maia makes it three. And we do have the three points as well. So... Another victory in the league, and we'll head from that to this game against Porto, where, as you can see there, I think a draw would be enough to send us through as group winners. So that is ideal. Just got a message there that Southampton want Johnny, but I am none the wiser regarding that. Haven't had an offer from them yet, unless it's part of those emails I've just got now. And there is the offer from Southampton for our fullback. Decent offer, actually, at £15.9 million. He is worth 16 though, and he does have a release clause. So if they really want him... They can match that release clause, in my opinion. I'm not interested in sending him just yet. He's now 81 rated, and he is very much part of my plans. Ready for this Porto game, though? We'll move into that one in a moment. Get ourselves through the Champions League group. See who we're going to put in that next round. And then who knows? Maybe even see if we can get through it again. Not a massive amount of changes to our side for this one. Porto side lines up like that, though. Uh, there is a couple of players that I like in that, that lineup as well. I've seen the lot. He grows nicely. Of course, they've still got Casillas, Corona, Brahimi few decent players in there but our side remains very much the same as we have seen it pretty much the entirety of this competition you'll see that pop up in just a moment you go Mayo Diaz Delic Johnny at the back Vas Garcia more Mina Sisto Bellotti don't know why it's changed Garcia to our captain it's Hugo Mayo is the club captain stop changing it game anyways we're into game ready to see if we can get out as group winners or if it will be second place that is destined for us but after this game we'll know who we have in the next round regardless and this is all about playing for pride. At this point, Porto can't do anything. They can't even make it out of the group and get into the Europa League. They're destined to go out. So for them, it is just to enjoy their football. And they might score here already. Ruben Blanco pulls off a very good save inside the third minute. So as I said, they're only playing for pride as well. But they're certainly here to play it with that chance initially. Garcia, Santimina. 
Oh, strength, Santimina. Use it, man. Get some on the back of yourself because that is shocking. Giving away far too easily. Suarez on the ball. He's got a run made down the left, and it's from Brahimi, who's now in the penalty area. His delivery towards the back post, and Johnny deals with it initially. We're struggling here in this early part to keep them quiet, and that is a, that's frustrating, but Mina will keep that in very nicely indeed, and all of a sudden, we might have a chance. More towards Belotti. He's offside. I thought for a second he was going to be, but then I saw the man and thought maybe he stayed on. Early 10 minutes, and I'm struggling to get out of my box. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. 1-0 Porto. Ah, oh, It's annoying because, again, our defending is always our weak point. It's in every series, my defending's a weak point. And that's just such a simple way for them to get in behind. Look at this. Two players there, Garcia and De Ligt, and none of them pick up their man. Oh, as I said, though, a loss doesn't really matter. But at the same time, I'm not here to lose. I'm here to win the game. That's what we're out here to do. And in the first 25 minutes, we've been the second best team. And honestly, it could have been even worse than 1-0. What a ball that is from Vass. Emre Moore makes himself a bit of a muddle, though, as he tries to bring it under control. Belotti, why are my strikers so, so weak? I swear Belotti has like 80 strength or something. I know he's got better than that, what he's just shown there. Here is Santamina winning it back, though. Mina in towards the penalty area. Santamina again. Not ideal, but Sisto comes away. <laughs> I think that's one of the worst goals I think I've ever scored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie me. We're back at 1-1. One, one. <laughs> the pass was supposed to go towards, like, Malotti, but... Uh, oh, never mind. Never mind. We've scored anyway. It's 1-1. One, one. Pion Sisto's got it, but... That wasn't a very good goal, was it, guys? <laughs> Santi Mina gets in. Poor defending. And Casillas, well... The less said about that, the better. Sees the man over, and it's going to be Johnny. He hasn't got a lot to work with, so goes back inside towards Mina. Mina towards Moore again. A little bit of space for Emery Moore. His delivery needs to be good. It's towards Pion Sisto. Flicks it back across. That was brilliantly worked. If Belotti had put it in, what a goal it would have been. But the, the header back from Pion Sisto was slightly behind our number 10. And unfortunately, Belotti just couldn't get on the end of it. It was so nicely worked from us as well. We'll win that back, though, and here goes Pion Sisto again. As he will drive forward and look for Emre Moore. And he finds him. Come on, where's Belotti? Why is Belotti on the edge of the area? What's he doing? Moore does just enough, though. And he will find Sisto again. Sisto strike. It's blocked. It comes back towards him. Can't get another bite of the cherry. Oh, that is so nicely worked. As Emre Moore will feed Belotti. Belotti towards Mina. This is brilliant play. Can Mina finish? The touch let him down. Another great move from us again. And it's just that final pass that we're lacking at the moment. The, the, the play's there. It's just that literal final ball. And sometimes we just can't find it. Why did Vass nearly like take that? Oh, Delic, sorry. Nearly take that away from our player. Mina. Just giving away. It's a poor ball from, uh, from Santi Mina. All right. Into the last few minutes now. Hold our nerve and don't concede like we always do. And then we're going to be topping the group. Vass more towards Belotti. Him and Mina got in each of his way. But here goes Santi Mina again. Mina has got Sisto on the overlap. Pion Sisto back towards Mina. Lovely worked again. And there is the finish from Santi Mina. That time the final ball was there. It is Porto 1, Celta Vigo 2. We are going through our Champions League group as group winners. Unless I have a collapse in these last few minutes now. But that surely will not happen. Come on, DJ Wood. Don't let yourself collapse like you always do in these games. And as it stands, that's a great way to end off the Champions League group that I called the group of death earlier on in this series. And I stand by that because it was a very tough group. But arguably a lot of the groups in this year's uh, Champions League were quite tough, actually, when I looked at them. Porto come forward again, delivering towards the box. Ruben Diaz will head that one away towards Mayo. And we'll do enough to deal with this. And that's not a great ball from Emre Moore, who looked towards Bellotti. It's pumped back in. The licks will clear. And it's actually offside. I thought that was the end of the game. But it's not. We've still got a little bit left. And there is the full-time whistle. 2-1 victory, boys. We've ended this one off very goodly indeed. Very goodly. I'm going to stop trying to use good words. But 2-1 Celta Vigo, thoroughly deserved that. Again, match facts weren't exactly like, you know, solid or anything, but we got the job done. Man United beating Fenerbahce by three goals to one mean they do join us in that next round of the competition. So it'd be interesting to see who they're going to pull, who we're going to pull, because they'll go through as second place. And I said to you that I wanted to win the group for a slightly easier draw. I mean, we're going to see if it actually has worked out that way. We're eight points clear at the top of the table currently in La Liga. Very happy with that one indeed. But uh, yeah, things are going pretty nice in, at the moment.
Moment of truth. Who are we going to get in this Champions League knockout rounds? It's there. I'm looking for us. Oh, do you know what? Winning the group worked because, well, we couldn't have got Real Madrid anyway. All right, so Juventus will play Monaco. Barca will play Dortmund. Real Madrid will play Manchester United. We couldn't have got Real Madrid in, uh, in that round, even if we'd have finished second because they are a Spanish team, I think. So I don't think you can play a team from the same nation as yourself in the first knockout round. Atletico Madrid pulled Marseille. Chelsea pulled Mönchengladbach. We got Schalke. Napoli will play Liverpool. And Manchester City will play Bayern Munich. So in all honesty, I'm very happy with that draw. Schalke, not the toughest team, not the easiest, but in terms of what we could have had, it's a fairly nice draw to us. We've got Nasic here as pretty much... I think I'm going to actually end the episode... What have we got to play? Bilbao. And then we've got a double header against Atletico in the round of 16 of the Copa de España. Mixed in there, we have a trip to Villarreal next episode as well. And that's that. So I'm going to sim this game here. We're still undefeated against Nasic. Uh, sorry, it's still undefeated in the league. But this one's against Nasic. We'll go ahead and sim this. And I'll end the episode off there, guys. But I'm going to do you guys a deal. If we can get 40 likes on this episode of today's Celta Vigo career mode... By midnight tonight, UK time, I will upload another episode tomorrow. That'll be a bonus video, because I've already got two videos coming out tomorrow, so that won't be a third video, hopefully, anyways. So 40 likes, and you'll get another video or another episode of this series tomorrow. That's my deal to you guys. 40 likes by midnight tonight, and you'll get another one. We're going to win this game by two goals to one to end the episode off today. Celta Vigo are through in the Champions League. We will match against Schalke. We're still top of La Liga. Things are going very well indeed. And if the teams below us lose their games, we have a potential to be 11 points clear. We're also going to be entering the January transfer window, probably in the next episode. So if you have any suggestions at all for signings you want to see, join us here at Celta Vigo. Leave a comment down below and I will look through them as I always do. But as I said, guys, hit this 40 likes on today's episode for another one tomorrow. We've also got the Road to Glory uh, career mode returning tomorrow as well with another video there. It's a transfer win, though. We spend a heck of a lot of money in that episode. I'm very excited to show you that one, the signings we brought in. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, that is how we'll end today's videos off. If you did enjoy this episode, a like it would be greatly appreciated. As always, thank you all for your continued support. I really appreciate it. If you are new around here and like what you see, the subscribe button is down below so you can click that and never miss an upload on the channel. And other than that, guys, I'll see you all again tomorrow for yet another video. Catch you all again. Adios.